Hi everyone, I'm Ali. If you watch Chinese historical films and dramas, you might have noticed that ancient Chinese entertainment performers are usually depicted as low-class people, and the female performers are even regarded as prostitutes. But was this actually the case in ancient China? Were these music institutes, such as Xiaofang, Li Yuan, and Yue Fu, just glorified government-run brothels? To answer these questions, we first need to have an understanding of how Chinese music institutes have evolved throughout history. The history of Chinese music goes as far back as the beginning of Chinese civilization. During the Three Sovereigns and Five Emperors period, it was recorded that these ancient sage kings invented different instruments. And then the Yellow Emperor appointed Lin Lun to compose music. So Lin Lun is considered the first minister of music in ancient China. According to the Book of Han, the meaning of creating music and harmonizing the eight tunes is to cleanse the evil thoughts in people's minds and flourish their righteous minds. And according to Li Ji or the Book of Rites, the reason the great kings created the ritual music system is not to feed human desires, but to guide people to discern right from wrong and go back to the proper way of mankind. So what is the ritual music system, or Li Yue Zhidu? It's a comprehensive social and etiquette system created by the Duke of Zhou during the Western Zhou Dynasty. It had a great influence on all of the following dynasties later on. But by the spring and autumn period, China was divided and all rules were broken. Confucius pointed out that the chaos in society was a direct result of the decline of the ritual music system. So throughout his life, Confucius advocated for the restoration of the ritual music system because he believed formal music is morally uplifting and the foundation of a stable government. Thanks to Confucius and his ideology, every dynasty after him have set up a dedicated department in charge of maintaining the ritual music system. This department was called Tai Chang or Tai Chang Temple in later dynasties. But other than Tai Chang, each dynasty also had other music institutes for different purposes. During the Qin and Han dynasties, a new department called Yue Fu was founded. It was in charge of collecting lyrics to compose folk songs. The famous poem known as the Ballad of Mulan, which is about, you guessed it, Mulan, was an example of a song collected by Yue Fu. By the Tang Dynasty, the need for managing more varieties of music, drama, aerobatics, and other forms of entertainment was increasing. Emperor Gaozu of Tang founded Jiaofang and was later greatly expanded by Emperor Xuanzong of Tang. The purpose of Jiaofang was to separate popular music for imperial entertainment from classical music used in formal rituals. According to the New Book of Tang, there were a total of more than 11,000 singers, dancers, and music performers during Xuanzong's reign, which is considered Tang Dynasty's peak time. Emperor Xuanzong also set up Li Yuan, or Pear Garden, inside the palace, where it was full of pear trees, hence the name Pear Garden. Xuanzong was one of the most talented emperors in Chinese history. According to Tang Dynasty records, Xuanzong handpicked 300 instrument players from Tai Chang and taught them music himself after he was done with his governmental duties. He had a sharp ear and was able to catch if anyone performed a single note off key. These music performers were taught directly by the emperor, so they were called the emperor's disciples or the pear garden disciples. You might still hear people using the term Li Yuan today, referring to Chinese opera or other music performers. The Song Dynasty followed the Tang Dynasty custom and also set up Jiao Fang. If you watch the 2022 drama A Dream of Splendor, that's where the main characters worked at. However, this drama depicted Jiao Fang as a place of punishment for family members of Chinese officials who committed crimes. But according to history, this couldn't have happened during the Northern Song Dynasty. I'll explain that in just a little bit. During the Yuan Dynasty, Jiao Fang became Jiao Fang Si. Ming and Qing Dynasties both carried on with the name Jiao Fang Si, but they also had additional music departments for other music needs, such as a band for marching a department for playing drums and bells, etc, etc. As you can see, 
Every dynasty put a great emphasis on managing ceremonial dance and music, as well as entertainment-related musical events. But since it was such an important craft, how could the performance be considered low class? According to the rites of Zhou, the music and dance performers during the Zhou dynasty were children of the distant relatives of the king of Zhou, who all belonged to a noble social class. Students back then were required to master six arts, and music was one of them. It was a rather exclusive and dignified art form. By the Han dynasty, things were changed. There was a musician named Li Yannian, and according to records, his entire family worked as musical performers. There were many families like Li's family who practiced music and passed down the skill to their family. However, these families didn't necessarily have a higher or lower social class than ordinary people. For example, Li's sister became Emperor Wu of Han's concubine. Emperor Wu's wife, the Empress, was also a singer. Another example was Emperor Cheng of Han, whose empress was a dancer too. By the Wei Dynasty, a law stated that the family members of robbers would be punished by changing their social status to Yue Hu or music class, which is now considered a lower class with many restrictions. And since then, it became a standard practice to punish criminals and their families by lowering them into the music class. People with a music class identity cannot marry people with higher social class, and once you are in this class, it was very hard to get out, and they passed down in the family. These families made up a large portion of performers. In the beginning of the Tang Dynasty, Emperor Gaozu of Tang spared all the families that were passed down from previous dynasties. But people with special music skills were asked to stay because it wasn't easy to pass the skill to someone else. So at this point, the music class was a lower class than commoners, but still higher than house servants or slaves. They had musical skills and were allowed to make a living freely using their talent. The music class in the Song Dynasty stayed largely the same. But what confused most people is that there were also female street performers working in brothels that practiced singing, dancing, and instruments to attract customers. On the other hand, female performers working in the imperial and official music institutes, such as Xiaofang, were different. They had a stable income from government. Their audiences were usually the imperial family and government officials, and they were protected by the laws. The officials were forbidden from abusing their power and forcing regular musicians to be prostitutes. However, things took a nasty turn in the Ming Dynasty. After the Yongle Emperor overthrew the previous emperor, he purged all the officials who supported the last emperor. After killing the officials, their families and children were sent to service institutes such as Jiao Fang Si. This was probably the reason why people thought Jiao Fang or Jiao Fang Si is a place for family members of political prisoners. But before this happened, only actual criminals were sent to the music class. So this was an unusual act ordered directly by the emperor with no laws to back his action. It's definitely not as common as what the fictional films and dramas have depicted. By the Qing Dynasty, Yongzheng Emperor ordered to remove the social class differences, and finally, performers were no longer considered inferior to other professions. The social status of ancient Chinese musicians gradually declined dynasty by dynasty. But music itself was always regarded highly by the government. In recent years, though, after the Communist Party took over, it banned all forms of entertainment, including music, dance, and singing, for ten years during the Cultural Revolution. Instead, they were replaced with so-called model operas and revolutionary songs, filled with communist propaganda. The goal of the Cultural Revolution was to systematically and completely wipe out traditional Chinese culture. But fortunately, there's a performing arts group reviving the once lost culture through dance, music, and singing. It's called Shenyun Performing Arts. I can't praise this show enough. It's what inspired me to start my channel as well. And as an added benefit, if you purchase tickets to Shenyun's website using my code Ali, you can get the processing fees waived. This code works for shows in the U.S. I'll put the link down in the description below. 
ancient Chinese performers suffered a lot of prejudice in the last two dynasties, and female performers were often associated with prostitution. But we can't ignore the fact that the music class system in ancient China and these music families were the main reason these art forms were preserved and passed down through the generations, despite whatever happened in the society. On another note, many of Chinese traditional trades were also passed down in the family in a similar fashion. This is a unique aspect of Chinese culture. All right, I hope you learned something new in this episode, and don't forget to check out Shen Yun if you want to experience real Chinese culture while immersing in heavenly music and dance. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in any other topic. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.